Hi everyone, <clears throat> back again for the second part of the course. Uh, we have stressed in the first video uh, the interest and relevance of um, plant phenotyping with, um, uh, based on the computer vision and imaging. And now we, we go uh, more in detail uh, into the um, plant phenotyping uh, pipeline. Um, by uh, taking care of how we acquire uh, images uh, with, um, which requires some uh, illuminations and also some cameras or sensors uh, to do the acquisition. So the approach is uh, the following, that um, the objective is to extract, extract uh, as easy as possible a useful information. And this information will be uh, will lay in the image in the contrast between an object, the useful uh, information, and the background, the noise. Uh, a contrast uh, uh, is a good contrast um, if there is a strong uh, difference of gray levels uh, in your uh, image between the object and the background. Uh, the contrast can come from uh, the illumination, and illumination means light. So we use light properties and interaction between light and matter uh, to enhance the contrast uh, in the scene so that uh, later the uh, image processing uh, will be as easy as uh, possible. Uh, we can uh, tune various uh, properties of light, uh, including directivity of light, wavelength, meaning colors, intensity, temporal coherence. Uh, this is related to the fact that you have only one single wave or multiple waves in your um, light, uh, one single wave being uh, the type of source of light called lasers. Uh, you can also you know, tune polarization, we, uh, we are going to, to, to see this later, or absorbance of objects and so on. So we are going to take all of these uh, single uh, light properties and illustrate on uh, simple use cases how uh, this can be tuned to enhance the contrast in imaging and how you should pay attention or how you can use these uh, tricks to simplify uh, your um, image with a strong contrast. So uh, if the scene, uh, meaning object and background, you want to image as an absorbance contrast, uh, meaning that the object that you will look out will not absorb light in the same uh, wavelength, uh, which is the case, for instance, for this red uh, apple, uh, which is, appears red to our eyes because it has absorbed all the wavelength, all the colors, um, except uh, the red, which is reflected. Same for a green leaf, uh, where, in this case, green has been reflected on the surface. So we're talking here about wavelength uh, included between 400 nanometers to uh, 800 nanometers, uh, which corresponds to the visible uh, light. And um, uh, if uh, you have specific tasks with uh, various objects of different colors, then you can uh, somehow, by uh, choosing uh, smartly your uh, lights, uh, change the color appearance of an object. For instance, if you have a red apple uh, enlightened by uh, uh, some uh, white light, uh, then you will uh, see the red apple uh, red and uh, its upper leaf uh, green. What if you shine a uh, red light on, on it, then the, uh, green, the red apple appears as uh, bright uh, red and the uh, green leaves appear as um, dark, as black, because they will completely absorb the, the red part. If you shine a, a, a green light on this scene, 
then this is the apple which appears to be black while the leaves appear to be green and if you shine uh, blue light on this scene then the background is uh, blue but all the object is black so if your objective was to only highlight uh, the leaves or only highlight the fruit or uh, highlight the fruit and the leaf at the same time uh, then you, you realize that uh, by picking up the right color for the right task you can enhance the contrast uh, in your scene by just uh, selecting uh, this, uh, this light smartly and not just putting white light uh, in this uh, matter. Of course this will depend, uh, th this capability of tuning the light will depend on the conditions in which you are working. If you are working under uh, field conditions, it may be difficult to have a full control of the light, but if you are working in control condition, which is often the case post-harvest uh, phenotyping, uh, then you can really uh, tune your light as much as you want. So here is an application where you would like to sort uh, green apple for, from red apple. And of course, you could use a color camera to do this, but um, uh, you can also use some uh, kind of trick like we have seen. If you shine a red light on it, a red apple will appear white, while uh, a green apple will appear black. And here you can sort very easily these two, um, these two uh, apples with a strong contrast and with only a non-color imaging, so a lower cost camera, because a color camera would cost higher than a gradable uh, camera. So you can really simplify your, uh, your life by picking up the right light. If you would have shined a white light on it and use a gradable camera, then the contrast is rather weak. So again, we can see that uh, picking up the right light can really simplify uh, your image processing, but not only your image processing, the cost of your sensors. In this case, we were using a gray level uh, camera rather than a color uh, camera. Now, if we move to a scene which has an intensity in uh, contrast, then you have to pay attention to the amount of light that will come into the camera. Uh, so here these are uh, seeds plucked on a wet blotter. So if you have not enough light coming on the uh, scene, then you will have something which is very weak and you will have a signal which is close to the uh, noise of the sensors because even a camera, if you put your hand in front of a camera and you uh, acquire an image, you will have some noise. You will not have exactly zeros. You will have some kind of random fluctuations which are due to the uh, temperature, the uh, internal uh, heat uh, process, which causes uh, some kind of electronic uh, disorders, which are um, acquired, recorded as uh, spurious noise inside the uh, pixel of the, of the camera. So if you don't have uh, enough uh, light, you will have something which is close to the background noise of the camera. So, this is really to, uh, to be avoided. And uh, you can put more light uh, or you can acquire a little bit uh, longer uh, to uh, have a good contrast. So the, your typical characteristic of a, gra of a camera, uh, gradable as a function of the time of uh, acquisition or amount of light that would come in, will follow a kind of a, um, uh, uh, linear by piece, piecewise linear functions where you have first non-sensitive non part where you put a little bit more of light but you don't have any re more response then you have a linear part this is a good contrast part and then you have a saturation uh, which is you put more light but you don't have more response so in this case actually this situation can be useful you can saturate somehow the background and you don't care if the signals from the seeds is actually in the linear part you can use the saturation to somehow denoise your image, which can be a good trick uh, to, to be used. Now, if the contrast between object and background um, uh, can, uh, the, the contrast between object and background can come from the directivity uh, of uh, your uh, of 
your light, not from the intensity, not uh, by picking up the, the color, but the directivity of the uh, light uh, in relation with the position of the object, the scene, and the camera. In this case, we want to object to image this uh, uh, object, so it's a small object which looks like a camera. And um, you can see here uh, there is a trick called um, backlight. So backlight, you will you will use this light by sending all the light in direction of the camera. This is typically a situation you would avoid if you want to take uh, a snapshot from yourself. Uh, you would avoid to have the uh, sun just be uh, just uh, in front of the of the camera, uh, just behind you, because you will have only a shadow of yourself. But in um, imaging uh, situations, sometimes only the shadow can be something very useful because actually, if you want to have the, sh the shape of a, of, a, of a leaf, you don't need to see the nerves and uh, the spots on the, on the leaves. Maybe you just need to see the shadow of this uh, object. And in this case, this backlight, so having the light, source of light uh, directly facing the, the camera and the object, uh, would come in, in between, so you will have a kind of shadow, Chinese shadow, we say, en uh, chinois in, in, in French, um, where you will have all the useful uh, information for the shape. Of course, if you are, want to image the uh, uh, tiny details on the, uh, on the upper part of the object, this is a very bad choice, but if you just need to have the global shape of the object, then this is a very nice trick to enhance your contrast. You will see in some of the examples that we show uh, in some of the videos that actually we've been using this when it, it comes about okay, monitoring the uh, growth of the, of the ceilings, uh, where it can be very useful to use this trick. Now, if you have also transparent uh, objects, so that's the case when you are working in vitro and you have uh, some uh, Yes, uh, tubes which will reflect lights very oddly when uh, you uh, uh, send lights uh, onto the, uh, uh, the tubes. Uh, that can be very uh, uh, disturbing. And in this case, again, it can be very useful to use the backlight uh, configuration where again, light comes directly in front of the camera. So you just have uh, shadows of the object and you have the, all the shape of the object, which can be good enough for a lot of situations you are interested in, in, in computer vision and in plant phenotyping in particular. Another trick of, uh, or another configuration for uh, image, uh, imaging uh, in relation to the directivity of the uh, light, can be to use uh, what is called uh, scatter light. So scatter light, you will use it when you want to have a light coming from all parts of your object. So you want to smooth all uh, shadows, all um, uh, grainy appearance on the object, and you want to have like a uniform light on your object. So that is the situation you will need, well, for instance, if you are looking for imaging of flat object like Arabidopsis or stuff like this, a uh, flat object is very nice. Now, if you want to enhance the, um, uh, all the details at the surface of the, of the leaf, it can be interesting to, instead of sending, uh, sending light from everywhere, to send light from a specular uh, direction, so a specific direction, which will cause a reflection uh, and will enhance all the uh, slight modulation of um, uh, structure that you have at the surface of the object, as we can see on these uh, two objects that we see on the, on the right. So here uh, you will highlight all the tiny details of the surface of an object, like we see uh, clearly on the moon, where we have all the details that can be seen on that when light is going uh, uh, in specular angle, uh, while uh, when light is uh, shining right on the object and we don't see any detail. All the details, you see them in the specular light when you are coming from the other side. Yeah. 
uh, in plant imaging, if you want to add ants, uh, or the structure of the leaf, or the uh, necrosis on the uh, cabbage leaf surface, this is also a trick that you could use uh, to see them better. Here again, uh, some uh, light mode uh, in this case. So we have two, uh, the same object, and we see here on the right the uh, diffuse uh, lighting, while on the left we see the uh, side, uh, the side lighting, and we see that it's really in this case not the best uh, choice, and it's better in this case to to, to have the uh, the uh, scatter a light from all uh, side and sending uh, light from the, the side will enhance the details of the uh, wet blotter and clearly not help uh, to extract the presence of the seed. Now, uh, let's uh, say a word about um, uh, if the contrast exists in the visible spectrum and you have the choice of different lighting technologies. So among lighting technologies, we, there are uh, at least three uh, types of uh, completely different technologies. There are the, what we call thermal sources, uh, where actually um, a small uh, uh, wire of metal is um, receiving uh, an electrical uh, uh, intensity of uh, electrons. And this will eat by the so-called Joule effect uh, and produce uh, uh, what we call the, the black body spectrum. So the black body spectrum is something uh, like we can see in terms of a spectrum here where we have something in terms of a, 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 a bell uh, curve which <coughs> starts um, uh, on the on the red part and goes very far in the infrared. So this is a source of light which produces a lot of uh, heat uh, and which corresponds to what we call halogen uh, sources. The, so the famous uh, Edison um, uh, light was something uh, like this and the halogen is the same as Edison but there is a, a special gas with uh, some halogen elements which prevents uh, the um, filament to, to break under a, a too high uh, temperature and even uh, manage to recover it uh, by an oxidoreduction um, chemical uh, reaction. So it enables to have a kind of longer life uh, to these uh, um, sources of light. Then there is the uh, what we call um, thermo um, no, uh, flash uh, light, um, which are uh, based on uh, a fluorescent uh, painting on the internal side of the of the tube. Inside of these tubes, we have um, mercury, uh, and then there is a flashlight which are sent. Uh, uh, every uh, 20 milliseconds, <clears throat> which uh, excites uh, the electrons on their, uh, from their basic uh, energy level to upper uh, energy level. And then there is an emission of, uh, of, la of light. This uh, light is captured by the um, fluorescent painting, which uh, then uh, sends again this, uh, this light to a <clears throat> larger uh, wavelength. So basically, this will uh, produce not a continuous spectrum like in the thermal uh, light, but this will produce what we call a, a spectral array uh, um, a sp uh, spectrum, uh, where you have spikes, spikes of, of light. So typically for mercury, you will have something in, in the UV, something in, uh, in blue, something in green, and something in uh, orange, uh, yellow. For the main uh, colors, so this is why somehow you you, you see these lights as a, a, a kind of um, uh, white, but a white which is very different from the white, uh, the reddish white that you have with uh, halogen. So I guess that in your classroom, this is the kind of uh, of um, cubes that we that we use. 
So all these technologies, these two technologies that I cited before, are now somehow left aside uh, for the LEDs, which have a much higher uh, efficiency, um, energetic efficiency, but also much more flexibility because, uh, for instance, um, uh, if you want to send some small uh, flashlights, the two uh, previous technologies are not very adapted to, uh, to, to, to this. And also the life time cycle of uh, LEDs is much larger, much longer than the other two uh, technologies. Basically, an LED would last uh, more than the human uh, uh, being. The, the, the technology itself is, is very robust. And also for LEDs, you can pick up some uh, wavelength, uh, which are uh, very, uh, uh, that you can tune to adapt to, to the, the boosting of the um, the plants or to enhance the, the, the contrast, so there's a, a huge activity on, on choosing uh, LEDs which are adapted to uh, some um, uh, plant phenotyping or plant growing uh, in indoor conditions. Uh, in indoor conditions. So the, um, for the LED, the white LEDs, actually there is also a kind of fluorescent painting inside uh, the LED. And uh, then you have this kind of spectrum with two, uh, two parts. So lifetime, efficiency, size, price, modulation, everything goes in the direction of LEDs uh, at the moment. Now, if contrast uh, is in the domain of um, uh, thermal, if we have a, a thermal contrast, so meaning that Actually, uh, in your scene, you have two objects with, which are not at the same temperature. So, um, this can occur in uh, plant phenotyping when you have um, uh, evaporation, uh, transpiration from the leaf, which is not the same at different uh, places, especially due to uh, the presence of uh, the development of pathogens, either fungi or virus or bacteria. And this will cause, uh, this will be the, because transpi uh, transpiration will not be the same uh, everywhere in the, in the leaf, then you will have a contrast in the temperature. So the temperature uh, is accessible through light, uh, and you can see, uh, you can relate uh, the amount of light sent by an object to its temperature, especially this will occur in the uh, thermal uh, domain. Now, uh, if you have contrast in fluorescence, so that's typically the, the, the case here, you have two inks, uh, fluorescent ink, ink and a non-fluorescent ink, and you, if you send uh, UV uh, on these uh, two objects, then it be, the contrast becomes much stronger uh, than, uh, than it was uh, in the visible uh, domain. So by fluorescence, this is here the the small uh, schematic part that we, I was describing. First, you have an electron that goes from level E1 to uh, level E2. Then there is a, a small loss of energy from E2 to E3, which is not sending any uh, visible light. And then we have uh, um, an electron that goes back to uh, E1 and send uh, a light, which is really uh, specific to the type of material that is uh, building your scene. So which may be completely different from the background and from the uh, object and by this you can really uh, enhance the contrast that you have between object and background and so this kind of phenomenon is also accessible for um, uh, for plants especially the uh, electrons that uh, will receive this uh, will, will benefit from this effect are the electrons which are not busy with doing um, photosynthetic uh, process. So, which means that if you measure the amount of light that you receive from E3, you have somehow an idea of how much electrons are not accessible to this uh, uh, photosynthetic uh, activity. So, you can have a kind of measure of the efficiency of the um, of the fluorescence uh, or of the photosynthetic activity if you compare this uh, amount of light that uh, uh, come in E3 by comparison with the basic level of, of light that would go in E3 when you were not sending any light. So uh, this is something that is, um, uh, that is uh, called chlorophyll fluorescence, which is useful to have indexes of um, 
photosynthetic activity, which will be something between 0 and 1, 1 being perfect uh, photosynthetic activity, and more or less be below 0.7, you have something which is in trouble, you have a light, uh, leaf which is in trouble. Now, uh, if contrast is due to optical uh, indexes, uh, so meaning that you have um, some um, uh, B -refrang the phenomenon called birefringence, so this birefringence in, uh, in physics can come from um, pockets or care effect, or uh, it can be induced electrically, magnetically, or mechanically. As we can see here, we have an object and we put some pressure on it and we, it will somehow, um, uh, the, 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 this piece of glass is still transparent, but if we look at it with uh, polarization, uh, light, polarized light, uh, then you can see the, the contrast, which is due to the mechanical uh, stress. Uh, so polarization of light, you may be aware that the light is a, is a wave, and actually this wave, so let's say it has electronic, electrical and magnetical wave, so this is a direction of propagation of light, and this is a, a fluctuation like this. So this fluctuation can be completely random, uh, perpendicularly to the direction of uh, propagation, or it can be organized, and if it's organized, we say it's polarized, for instance, only fluctuating in this direction instead of rotating in all, uh, all directions. Yeah. And so if we send a non-organized light uh, after a polarizer, this polarizer will act as a grid and lead, let the electric or magnetical uh, field only move in one direction. So if an object is modifying this way of, uh, of, um, of moving of the, of the light, then if you put another uh, polarizer, another of this grid, uh, typically you will uh, see uh, the impact of the object on the way uh, the, the light is propagating. I, I, I know this is something a little bit uh, complex uh, here, and I'm very, going very fast on, uh, on this. This can be used in theory in computer vision. There is few applications of this in uh, plant phenotyping. However, if you think of um, biofilm, uh, which can uh, cover the surface of the leaf, uh, either it is something due to a fungi or uh, like um, wax, uh, which are visible on some uh, leaf and which may evolve during uh, time, then uh, this is the kind of film which may uh, cause some birefringence and that you could uh, uh, enhance in terms of visibility with by using polarization. Also, polarization can be used to withdraw uh, the reflection of light onto uh, some uh, plastic or um, uh, object. So, uh, so you, you can completely withdraw the reflection of, uh, of light by using polarizer. So this is something you can see uh, here. So here, imagine you have uh, something under a plastic uh, bag. Uh, this is a situation that you have uh, here. And you want to withdraw the reflection of light by using a polarizer. You can completely withdraw uh, this. This is used uh, in cinema industry, uh, in movie industry, in what is called um, American Night. Uh, so to avoid uh, shooting movies during the the night, which cost, uh, which is more costly, uh, people can use um, a cost polarizer so that uh, they will somehow uh, uh, reduce the amount of uh, light. So you, sh you shine a light which is like this, and if you uh, put another uh, polarizer in front of the camera, uh, which something which uh, only receives information like this, you will have almost zero. So you will be completely in black. And so if you give a small angle, you can uh, tune somehow the amount of intensity that you will have under your uh, camera. So we have a see here the, uh, the, the spectrum of a light uh, before and after a polarizer, and you see that it almost uh, withdraw completely the, the light when the two polarizers are completely crossed. So it can be used if you are working uh, in vitro conditions or if you have to uh, uh, bear with a plastic bag to um, avoid uh, a transparent plastic bag where you, where you have to avoid contamination or you are in incubation or something like this, you can uh, withdraw the reflection of light by using polarizers. These polarizers are just simple uh, device that you can put uh, on your um, source of light and 
uh, same you can put also on your camera. So if contrasts are hidden in small mechanical details, uh, this is where you can use uh, the uh, temporal coherence of uh, a laser light, which can uh, enable you to see a small detail not visible with a human uh, light, with a human eye, typically microscopic uh, detail, uh, where uh, you will send the light and do some interference between the light which has reflected on an object and the light which has reflected on a, an object of, uh, of reference. So by doing this interfer um, the interference, then you will be, uh, kept, uh, it will be possible to, to see details which are at the level of the wavelength and the wavelength uh, will be uh, 0.4 um, uh, micrometer, so something which is uh, 0.4 to 0.8 mi micrometer, so there's a visible spectrum when you are using visible laser light. And uh, so you will see uh, details which are the fraction of, the, of this, so very tiny details. Now, if uh, you are very, if you cannot use this uh, trick, so of course, when you are using this, you need to have no vibration of any kind around your object. So if your plant is moving, if there is uh, some air coming in, which is often the case in, a, in control condition or in wind condition, it's not possible to, to use uh, uh, this. So you are really to have in purely a control condition where there is no flux of air or vibration that comes around. Now, if you are, uh, if you work, uh, if, if you want to see tiny details, you can also use a microscope, so optical microscopes, transmission electron microscopy, or um, uh, chun tunneling effect or atomic force microscopes, which can give you access to uh, uh, very small uh, details coming from micrometer, nanometer, and even at the scale of an atom. Now, if the contrasts are not visible outside the object, but inside the, the sample. So then what you could do is use the power uh, of X-ray, which has the ability to go inside, to, to, to completely uh, uh, go uh, inside uh, or through the, uh, the, the object. So this is um, used on dry samples. Uh, this is used a lot in biomedical uh, domain, but this is used also in plant phenotyping, especially when you are interested in looking at uh, details in dry samples, so especially for uh, seeds, it is really uh, used uh, as, a, as a routine. It's much more difficult to use them uh, if you are um, you know, on wet uh, tissue, so imbibed seeds or uh, in, uh, entire plants. Now, uh, in the imaging system we will process, we will uh, process uh, imaging mostly coming from um, classical uh, cameras. Uh, and so it's good to know how an image is, uh, is formed. Uh, so we are finished with uh, how to optimize the, 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 the contrast. And uh, we can discuss about how to form uh, an image. So it's based on the principle of uh, geometrical optics, where you have an object which is on the side of the scene, uh, a lens, and then uh, an image which should be uh, focused on the, um, on, the, on the CCD, on your uh, camera. So uh, it's possible to, to know the, 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 the focal distance and the position of the object and uh, the size of the object are related somehow to the focal length of the, uh, of the lens that you are using. So if you want to have the image which is on tie on your uh, sensor, you have to know the size of your uh, CCD uh, camera, which is often um, expressed in inch one inch, uh, uh, two third inch, half uh, an inch. And uh, this gives you the size of your sensor, which are often uh, rectangular uh, sensors, so not square, but rectangular uh, uh, sensor. Uh, you can adjust the, the focal distance and the size of the uh, object. If you pick up a smaller focal, you have a smaller image. If you uh, pick up a larger focal, you will have a larger, uh, a larger image. So you can either move the lens or change the focal lens to optimize uh, the, uh, 
the use of your uh, sensor. You have to pay attention when you uh, select a camera that there can be some aberration, which can be due to uh, what we call uh, spherical, astigmatic, or distortion uh, aberration, which are arranged as a geometrical, para, uh, geometrical aberration of the, of the system, meaning that a point in the object seen will end up in a, a, a blurred uh, blob in the, uh, on the CCD. Also, there are some uh, aberrations called um, uh, color chromatic aberrations, which can come uh, due to the fact that the, the glass of the lenses can uh, act a little bit like a prism, uh, where if there is some dispersion, but all wavelengths do not behave the same, uh, the same way. So there are some uh, lenses which are corrected from uh, from this and this is a higher price but you have to be aware that there can be this and so maybe get in touch with some expert to select the, the best length when you pick up an objective. The sensors are what are based, uh, the camera itself are based on a, a CCD, so a charge coupled device which is like a, a matrix, so a table where you have the, the pixels of the camera. So there is a photoelectronic uh, effect when, when uh, photons come on each cell, it will uh, 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 enable an electron to, uh, to move. And this, uh, all these electrons which are uh, captured will be measured and uh, we will measure the amount of, uh, of them. And uh, this will be uh, converted into a gray level um, so the more, the higher uh, the number of uh, photons uh, which have come onto each pixel, the higher the gray level. You have to be aware uh, if you want to use uh, or select uh, color uh, images that there are two kinds of uh, color uh, camera. There is uh, what is called a single CCD camera and the free CCD camera. If you want to have uh, three colors, so basically blue, red, and green, we use them because we have ourselves as human, uh, three kinds of cells at the end of, uh, at the back end of our, our retina. So we use sensors with three, uh, three colors. And um, uh, if you use, uh, so basically, if you want to have a red, green, and blue image, you need three sensors. And this is called a free CCD uh, camera. It's much more expensive than the usual camera that you have, for instance, on your smartphone, which is only a single sensor. And on this grid, you have actually small filters. So uh, green filters, blue filters, and uh, red filters, so that actually uh, there you don't have three full frame images. You have only, you have holes on a, a red image, holes on a green image, and holes on a blue image. And what the uh, camera is doing afterward, it is interpolating uh, the red uh, level or the green level or the blue level based on the neighbors. So for instance, if I, I'm on this uh, blue uh, uh, pixel and I want to know uh, what is the uh, uh, red value, and we interpolate from the fourth neighbor which are around. So, uh, we leave you with a small exercise where we give you uh, all the information about how to answer, and we will provide the uh, solution later during discussion with you, how to choose the right lens. So we give you uh, the size of an object, we give you the size of a, uh, of a CCD, and we uh, request you to compute based on this formula uh, what is the best um, what is the best uh, length that you can uh, use. Actually, you will see that um, uh, so this is the first uh, example uh, here. Uh, the height of them, you have the theory, and then here, uh, this is the application where you have the distance to the camera, you have the width of the object, and you have the type of uh, uh, properties of the, of the camera. And so we request you to have a look and to find out the solution, which is also given here in this case. Okay, so this is it for the, this uh, second uh, course 
on um, sensor uh, illumination and uh, we will uh, in the further uh, course uh, work on how to process images which have been acquired with such uh, sensors. See you in the next video.